All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Elana Wisby. I am the CEO of Oxford Quantum Circuits. Um, I'm a deep tech entrepreneur. I do have a PhD in quantum physics, but I'm not going to be talking to you about quantum physics today. We're going to be talking about quantum ethics, which I'm really excited about um, because it's a little different. Now, I'm really short and I'm in heels and I can't see you very well. So I'm going to stand here. And if you can uh, still hear me, excellent. We can give us a thumbs up. Right. So today I'm looking to answer the question, whose responsibility is it anyway? Well, it's a difficult question. Um, and I'm going to kick off by asking a question um, that I'm often asked when talking about quantum ethics. And that is, is quantum ethics actually any different to regular ethics or regular technology um, ethics? You know, is there really anything that's different about it? Should we be even really talking about this? And bizarrely, it's something we get asked quite a lot. My answer to that is absolutely yes. There are very, very few types of opportunities within the technology space that really represent, as um, John was saying, this kind of humongous step change that really does impact on everything that we're going to do. So it's not just um, a, a unique opportunity. It's one that's incredibly, incredibly rare. So if we think back to um, here, we've got the Nobel Prize piece here. Um, now, the Nobel Peace Prize, does anybody know um, where that came from? Came from, yeah, dynamite, exactly. Um, do we think dynamite is particularly peaceful? No. But at the time, it was heralded as something which actually was going to end war forever um, because we had energy already, we had different ways of creating explosion. But once we created dynamite and applied it to military purposes, um, it was suddenly, you know, we're never going to have a war again. Now, actually, um, he identified, um, the, uh, Nobel, Alfred Nobel identified that, um, well, his obituary uh, got published before he died, which is kind of awkward. Um, and <laughs> in that obituary, he was heralded as like, a very evil person. Uh, I think it was called like the Minister of Death or something. And he wasn't very happy with that. Um, so he set up um, the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm digressing. Um, my point is that it's really, really complicated. And often we create new technology in ways in which we expect and want to make a really positive change. But often there's a, an impact that we can no longer be um, in, not consider um, when, we're, when we're doing that. And there's very few kind of technologies that really do represent that humongous impact. And if you think about dynamite, that's kind of got one application, it blows things up. Mm -hmm. Quantum computers can apl be applied to pretty much every single market vertical. They're going to be able to do tremendous things and therefore the impact is going to be even more great. So from this angle, it's unique, it's rare, and it's something that we definitely need to be paying attention to and therefore I do think it's something worth talking about separately. Another question that I often get asked is, OK, <laughs> so should we be building one then? Should we be building one anyway? Now, from my perspective, this is a question that is a non-question. It's a question that's already been answered. The genie is already out the bottle. <laughs> All right, the technology already exists. I think there's very, very few examples in human history of where we've created and become aware of the new technology, particularly one of such tremendous impact and huge application, and we've not pursued it. Though I guess, actually, in hindsight, maybe I don't know about it because we wouldn't know about it today <laughs> if somebody forgot about it. But once we know things, we generally can't forget about them and we generally pursue them. So my starting position on this is the genie's out of the bottle. We know this is going to happen. We need to make sure that we address it soon. And by and large, uh, we embrace this technological um, development um, from a really positive and a really good place. At OQC, our mission is to build a brighter future for all that is enabled by quantum. And with that in mind, there's a ton of applications that can help build a better and brighter world applied with quantum um, computing. We can have um, better um, ideas of understanding the fundamental um, world around us. So understanding how every atom and molecule really interacts, how we can then apply that to creating new drugs, how we can apply that to creating new materials, how we can apply that to creating new battery technologies to help build a more sustainable ecosystem. There's so many different applications that quantum computing could one day have humongously transformative impact for good with. 
With that said, and I do want to be clear, everything I do emerges from this perspective of trying to build this brighter future for all. I am, and I'm incredibly, incredibly privileged to, to lead a company that really does have the opportunity to, to reshape that future and to provide this technical revolution. We cannot be naive and we can no longer accept and, and recognize and ignore, we can no longer ignore the fact that there is this um, huge potential and risk and concern that needs to be effectively managed. Just because something is well intended, it does not always mean that it's well applied. And uh, there are these realities that quantum technology sits against. Um, it's hugely enabling, significant power, um, and the applications are going to require significant ethical um, consideration. One that's often spoken about is Shaw's algorithm. So how one day a quantum computer will be able to decrypt information and information security as we know it. And that's obviously got huge implications for every single person and every bank and everybody around the world. You know, and people are talking about it today because of course there's the concept of decrypt later, but, but download now. So is our information gonna be safe? These are questions that governments are already asking, particularly around quantum technology. And it's driving a huge area of quantum nationalism. So quantum has seen huge government um, injections of capital, significant interest, national security investment acts, a huge drive of that technology because of the impact that it can make and how that um, has the potential to be used both positively for economic and prosperity, but also um, for nefarious purposes. And more broadly thinking of it societally, if we've got certain countries, certain regions, certain access to this next level of technology um, application, that's gonna benefit some people more than others. And how are we gonna, how are we gonna navigate that societal um, divide that's gonna be created even greater because of the application of this type of technology? We also need to think about public trust. You know, how can we communicate effectively with the people around us? How can we make sure that this is something which people understand that they're not going to be scared of, that they see the positive benefits of as well? And really, these are all questions and all ethical considerations that we need to be thinking about and we need to be thinking about today. Now at OQC, we are building the hardware. So we are building Quantum Compute as a Service. We've launched Europe's first Quantum Compute as a Service on Amazon Web Services. So if anybody wants to log in and to run a quantum algorithm on our quantum computer, Lucy, you can do so. Uh, actually tomorrow, she's online from 10 to one, um, but please go and do that um, and test this out. But just because I'm building hardware, that doesn't mean that the applications aren't important. It doesn't mean that I am not responsible for, and I'm not shirking that responsibility um, overall. And if we think about whose responsibility is it every, anyway, if we think of it from an applications perspective, we know it's going to be um, a, an area that can impact pretty much every market vertical. There's gonna be applications from pharma to energy, to finance, to government. So that's a huge sum of people. It's gonna be applied all across the world to millions and millions of problems. So it's being applied to loads of people. Now people make up society. So this is a societal concern and it is a concern that should therefore involve everybody. And it's therefore everybody's responsibility. And I had a go at just trying to put together a quick Venn diagram because my inner scientist couldn't quite get away without any plots. Um, but here we've got this kind of intersection of how we need to think about this. So we've got academia, and public as two different areas and how they coincide and their responsibility around education. We've got academia and industry and how that coalesces around research. Industry and government and the fact that there's this intertwinement of regulation that needs to be applied. And of course, um, government and public and really that's when policy and regulation um, needs to come through and we'll probably hear some more on governance um, on that later. Now, of course, the people in the most powerful positions do have greater responsibility and I'm in a pretty powerful position. I'm running a quantum computing company with 70 people. We're building the technology that's gonna have all of these incredible applications, but also not being naive um, to the uh, impact that that can have as well. So I would like to talk a little bit more about what I have direct experience of 
in this area and the things that individually we can start to do. So from my experience, and I'm very privileged to work um, often with the UK government, um, off the back of that £38 million fundraise, I was uh, rather surprised to receive a letter from the former Prime Minister, um, Boris Johnson, congratulating me um, on that raise, which was bizarre um, and you know, obviously incredible and it's now in my um, bathroom. <laughs> um, it's a good talking point for guests. Um, my point is they're paying attention, right? They are paying attention. They would not have done that if they were not paying attention. Um, there's also now the UK National Security Investment Act. After the fundraise, I took three weeks holiday and on my first day of holiday, I received a letter informing me that I was not allowed to leave the country um, and needed to provide quite a lot of information to the UK government very promptly, otherwise I would be personally arrested, um, <laughs> which did ruin my holiday vibe somewhat. Uh, so I had to do yoga at home, which was a bit of a shame. Uh, anyway, NSI Act is actually a really good thing. It's making sure that we're mindful as to who is investing into these types of businesses. Because remember, power, responsibility and control. Who has the responsibility? Who has the authority? Boards, governments, uh, governance um, of these types of entities. So the governments locally are, are paying attention to where funding is coming from in that way. Um, we also have government directly investing into the company. So we're very privileged to have the Breakthrough Fund um, investment into OQC, um, which again is something you wouldn't see unless people were paying attention, but it also has um, an ethical stance um, within their type of, of governance piece there. Now, initially, when I first started fundraising three, four years ago um, on previous rounds, um, I was definitely approached by people with nefarious purposes, and, and you probably can both um, also recognize that. You get some shady people coming and offering you 20 million pounds, but just set up this particular structure in which we own all of your IP, and uh, the money sits here in some Cayman Island. Um, all of these types of things do not happen now, and a lot of this has come through effective government policy regulation and all of these things coming together um, in that way. Clearly said something funny. All right, building ethical quantum computers. So we are building technology for good. And a lot of that comes from leadership. So there's also huge ethical considerations when building these companies. Um, so I'm just not focused on building world-class technology. I'm focused on building a world-class company. And that is values-led and values-driven 100% of the time. Now, one of our core values is to cultivate love. And that is not simply a corporate maxim, that is absolutely a statement of ethical consent. And that is primary and sits first and center in who we are as an organization and underpins everything that we do. We also are very passionate about diversity and inclusion because we recognize the technology that we are building will reflect the people that build it today. These are all part of wider ethical considerations and within the sphere of control of what we can do. And it underpins a strong culture and a strong culture which is dedicated to making sure that we are building tech for good and building companies with really strong ethical considerations. And it's working. I can't tell you um, particularly, but there are specific examples and stories of where people have raised concerns and it's got straight to me within 20 seconds. I've been able to address it. And that's because it sits within our culture and that's so, so important. So a closing thought. We have here a historical once in a lifetime opportunity to think about how we create an industry and that is everybody's responsibility and it should not be exclusive, it should be inclusive. And we need to build this so it serves humanity and we can build it from a place of love and that's so, so powerful. My big statement at the end, actually, is we should be considering how we think about this completely. Statement here from Otto. I believe the most important issue of the current crisis is our thinking and how we collectively think. How we collectively think. So collectively, we should be coming up and thinking, how are we going to collectively think about addressing quantum ethics, ethics broadly? from a different opportunity. And here we can build a quantum revolution and we can also build an ethical revolution together. Seven. Thank you very much.